Okay, so I've just got Street View open now so that we can start to refine some of the, uh, the details and uh, especially focusing on the heights um, get a, a firmer grip on, on those. So there we've got the 3D view showing the walls with some fairly nominal heights and so you would have seen before that I made a level for the top of the walls which just started um, with uh, as uh, level one ceiling. But having uh, looked at it more closely, I've realised that it really would make more sense to have just a level for the top of the wall and we'll come back and add the ceiling in afterwards. And uh, so, I'm going to check that height. So, 8970. And so, I will simply make this level... Eight 970 that height and I'm going to change the name to one I like to use a lot TOW top of wall ok so this is a common way of establishing heights because quite often in a building like this one of the main heights that establishes the top of the building is the top of the wall because it has a parapet there that rises above the roof now there's another parapet at the shop front uh, or on the wall that's facing the street uh, which is even higher so when we come to model that in detail we may add another level for the top parapet but for now this is all we need so again TOW for top of wall raising the level to that height and because I've drawn the walls to that level they should automatically rise up uh, and so now looking in the floor plan you can see that uh, we've got the wall behind the stairs which is broken with a few openings and that essentially is the wall that the upper level wall sits upon and that's the back of the building so I'm going to make a reference plane again we're focusing on the interior so I'll use the uh, inside of the wall and I'll draw a wall ah so I better check sorry before I do that my width is 270 so that's fine I can use the wall I've already made and so I'm drawing from the top and in this case um, it's taking the wall to the right of that reference plane now remember, I'm still using finished face interior here for my location line, so that's the right option. I, I am drawing on the interior face of the wall. So do you remember what to do if the wall goes onto the wrong side? Space. Exactly, space is the option, that's good. So, uh, so I'm going to take that down to the bottom. And then these walls are narrower with any luck, they're 150s, 200. Okay, so that's fine. We've got a wall for that, generic 200mm wall doesn't hurt to make a type for it, so again edit type and duplicate and I'll call it existing 200mm I don't need to change any properties though because thickness is already 200mm and here it's really important if I'm using finished face interior that I draw on the inside face of the wall and again if it goes to the wrong side space to flip it Uh, now, I didn't check the heights there, but it is up to top of wall, so that's fine. Okay, so in the 3D model, or sorry, 3D view, you can see that wall just on the upper level. We'll add in the lower level walls afterwards. But that then shows me, if I go to my level 1 floor plan, where these walls need to come down. And this is where you've got a few options for the um, setting of the heights. The simplest way is simply to split those walls. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use split element on the modify tab and then hovering over that wall there you can see I'm just going to choose a point really anywhere inside this or in line with either side of that wall should be okay but uh, closer to the back would be good. 
and then again down here, get it in line with the back, that's good. Now what you'll often find though, this is where Revit gets a bit uh, fiddly, if you turn on hidden lines, you can see that this one's okay, that's lined up exactly, but looking down at the bottom, it's not. So a good way of fixing that is to drag this wall away, then drag this one back to join the previous one, the one above. And then drag this one back to the corner. Oh no, sorry, don't do that, don't do that. So what it'll do then is heal it. So if I drag it across, you can see it's going to the right point, but it's now joined this back into one wall. And again, Revit sometimes does a bit too much thinking for you. So before I do that, I'm going to select this wall on the left and change its top constraint to level 1. So it's now lower than this level, and when I drag it back to the right this time, it will remain unconnected. So for the other wall, you can see that we've got a problem now. It looked fine before, but it's now moved the joint to the middle. Now, when we set the heights, it should fix that. I'm just going to change it so you can see what I mean. If I change this now to the top constraint level 1. The joints look OK, but if I select this wall, you can see it's going past the midpoint. So I'm going to drag it back to the corner there, just to be sure that it's right. And then this one, that looks OK. Now, if I go back to thick lines, though, you can see that, again, the joins aren't maybe uh, as they should be. So you can try to fix that just by dragging the ends away and then dragging them back together and you can see it has some issues. So you can play around with the automatic joining. What I'm showing you here is the automatic joining conditions of these walls. They should heal themselves and join together automatically. And in this view, it, it actually is. So maybe that's, honestly, if that's the AutoCAD line. Yeah, so that's actually an AutoCAD line coming through. I was going to show you, if you still see this line, you can always use the join tool to manually join the walls. But uh, again, in this case, we don't have to. Um, oh, now, one little thing here. This wall should have stopped at the um, office. So to fix that, I can simply drag this wall back to the left and either drag this one across, or I'll do it a different way using trim to corner. Join these two walls together. And then now drag this wall back. Right. And if you establish these heights, then the model's in a simple form uh, as it is now. It's much easier than uh, if you have all the extra walls you get added as part of your design, because when you have extra walls, they'll be trying to join automatically to these walls as well, and making these changes is, is a lot harder at that stage. So you want to set up the shell as much as you can when the model's in a fairly simple form like this. Again, so looking at the existing shell there, you can see I've got those overall heights fairly well established. The part that is at the front higher than the part that's at the rear. And so maybe the next area where you'd want to focus on the heights would be the, um, the awning and the shop front below it. So you can see again here we've got this awning. And looking in the AutoCAD drawings, you have a height for the awning. So I'm simply going to measure that. From the ground floor height, since that's our zero height. Now I've measured diagonally in uh, AutoCAD, but that's okay because it'll give me a delta Y height here. So delta Y equals 3617. Let's say that's close enough to 3620. And then the height from the top. I don't think that would be, maybe I was a bit slack with the way I drew this originally as well, but we'll, we'll have a look and see what it looks like. So to the top is 3800. Okay, so going back to, uh, to Revit, just to get you started on the awning. 
in the ground floor floor plan, you do have an outline and in the level one drawing as well. And so I'm going to go to ground floor with drawing and for objects like this, if you're not sure which tool to use, or if there isn't a tool, remember, model in place. And you should all be experts with that, having used it a lot with your last uh, project. But model in place, one of the best tools in Revit. And we don't know the category. So if you don't know the category, use generic models. So awning is the object. Extrusion, and then extrusion start is 3, 6, well I said 2 o, but let's just make it even more of a round number, 3, 6, 0, 0 for the start, and 3, 8, 0, 0 for the end. And I'm just going to draw lines tracing over the AutoCAD lines, so I'll try pick lines to pick those lines from the AutoCAD file. making sure they're all joined together. Tick to finish and I won't see it in the ground floor plan anymore because it's above the height of that plan. If I go to the level one plan I can see it because it's below that floor plan. So I'll finish the model. You can see it's greyed out because it's below the height of this floor. And uh, then in the 3D view, there it is. And to give you a little tip, if you want your model to look um, presentable, your, your Revit model I mean, it would be a good idea to model in something for the shops either side. And that's a really easy thing to do. Once you've got this model established and you've done the shop front, it's a fairly simple thing to just extend some walls out to the side and add in some extra awnings uh, the same way I've just done those. And uh, so to do the sloping part of the awning roof, uh, you can add more to that uh, extrusion later, but uh, for now I'll leave it like that, because uh, I want to get started on the um, the opening. And this is really something that will take quite a few steps, so I'll just do it uh, in a basic way to begin with, just so you can set it up. So, looking at the floor plan there, you can see that we've got this section of sloping uh, glazing, ignoring the fact that the angle's slightly off there, and here that's okay. And then looking at street view, you can see you have a plinth, or a, uh, basically a footing, underneath the um, the glazing there, or the, the shop front. And it's essentially an extension of the main wall that you have either side. Right, so what I'm going to do is split this wall. Uh, I'll also change the height, so I'm going to select that wall, change the height to... Oops. So change the height to level 1, and maybe just to make it clearer, I'll put the new wall in above, just so you know what I'm doing this for. So I've got the wall there which stops at level 1, and really we should be taking this wall down and putting a new wall above, but I'll just keep it simple and put a new wall above that. Okay, so that's another 270 wall. And again, I can just draw from the interior, tracing over the AutoCAD lines, not the reference plane. Okay, so in the 3D view, you can see that new wall 
joining to the lower one. So that's good. Then, this is where it's going to get a bit complicated. Yeah, so we're going to have to s cut the opening and then add in, add in some extra walls. So let's just see if I go into ground floor. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to change the height. So I wanted to avoid this, but I'll have to do it. Okay, so this wall, which is the wall sloping away, that's why it looks different in the section here, needs to come down to just below the awning. So in properties there, I've stretched it down, and in properties I can see the top offset is minus 720. I'm going to make that minus 700, just so that it's a round number. And then the wall above, I will make its base offset minus 700. So essentially what that's giving me is a beam that will run across that entire opening. Essentially this wall above coming down into this level. So we need that. Might look a bit ugly in the section initially, but you'll see the purpose of it before too long. So then back into the ground floor. Ah, uh, minus 700. And so we'll have a look at that in 3D as well. So in 3D, it looks like it's all joined together, but on the inside we can see now we've got those two thicknesses. And again, the purpose of those will be a lot clearer once I split this apart. So now I can go to modify, split element, and choose this wall just to break it somewhere. Then I'm going to drag, well I want to drag it from this corner here back to this part on the awning, on the uh, shop front I mean. And uh, so the grip though is coming up on the left. So a really good trick a lot of people don't realise you have as an option is to change the location line to the other side. So when you change the location line it won't move the wall. It's just a way of moving the baseline within the wall. So now I can drag this back to the uh, end point. Well in this case I'm going to just get it close because you can see it's not actually on the line of the wall. It's slightly off. So to make it easier, I'm going to draw a reference plane and project it from that edge there through the wall. I'm going to go to thin lines so that I can see everything a bit clearer. So remembering thin lines is the option you have on the access toolbar at the top. And now again I can drag this wall and this time I have, oops, I've got an intersection I can snap to. And in this case with the, uh, the wall on the upper part of that plane, I don't need an extra reference plane because I've got something to snap to. But I do still need to change the location line to finish face exterior. I can drag that grip now back onto this intersection here. And then, I'm going to draw some new walls with the same thickness. So, it was, uh, sorry, I think it was 250 actually, wasn't it? I don't know if you remember the thickness of that wall. 240, sorry. Okay, it's just in 240. So from this corner here, I'm simply going to trace along Ah, so before I draw the wall, start that again. Uh, I'm going to change the finish line to, or the location line to finish face exterior. And draw from this corner. So I'm using a bit of judgement to change the shape of the, the shop front a little bit. 
to make it slightly easier to draw. And then across to the uh, other line there. So the same at the bottom, but this time space to flip. And across to here. So I'll turn thin lines off so you can see those walls more clearly. And then with control I can select these four new walls and set the height the same way I did for the, the walls at the front. In other words, make the top offset minus 700. So again in 3D, have a look at that. So you can see on the inside we've got these walls coming in. And I've set the height to be the same as these just so that I know when I'm subtracting uh, what heights I need to go to. So, these walls all need to come down because this, you can see here, this floor does step down slightly. We don't know how much. Oh, yes, we do, sorry, we've got it in the survey. Okay, so the curb there is essentially 4020, or is that the awning, sorry, no, the curb is, or the footpath, the top of the awning is 4068, why can't I see the level for the footpath, 3630, I think, that's the corner there does slope down a bit but I think 3630 is okay and then 3649 is the floor height on the interior so in other words it steps up 190 that means we've got to bring these walls down so I'm just using control to select all of them And so this wall here is going to be visible at the front, so it's going to come down as well. This one isn't, so it doesn't need to come down. So that should do it. So the base offset for those, I'll make minus 190. There we go. And now I'm ready to cut away the part where the shop front needs to go. So that's back into ground floor with drawing and again model in place so the better you are with the modeling tools the easier it's going to be model in place and the category i will choose is again walls and i'm going to call this shop front opening so then void forms void extrusion And I'm going to draw a line following the edge of the opening on either side of the main opening. From this one, I'm going to then come across, back up, and then using trim, join this line to the one I draw to it first. And now I can draw another line out in the middle of the footpath and trim to join those together. So for this one, the extrusion start is simply going to be zero. I want this to start at the ground floor height. The shop front I can then measure in AutoCAD, so I'm just going to measure the height of that line. So that is 28.90. Might need to adjust this in a moment, but we'll see then when I've finished it. So I'm going to finish that. Look in the section. And, uh, yeah, because of the way I've done it, I'm going to adjust that and just drag it up to the top of the wall. 
So it ended up being a bit higher, but that's fine. So finally, to finish this off before doing the curtain wall, you have to use cut. So when you make a void, you've got to use the cut tool before you can finish it. So I'm going to choose this one, then a wall, and then again, void, then a wall, void, then a wall. Just keep going through and choose every wall in the shop front. And so now I'm ready to draw in the curtain wall. So notice how I've got that beam essentially running across the top, which is basically the bottom of that wall. Okay, so then to draw the curtain wall, we've got this nice line that I can follow, and uh, I'll start just with the wall tool using storefront and since I'm using uh, finish face, oh sorry, using uh, yeah, finish face exterior doesn't matter because it's always centered. Level 1 and I'll set the top offset to minus 700. And then simply trace that centre line will modify this wall afterwards to make it look like the real one, but for now this will do. Ah, oh, that's the wrong one, so this line. Okay, so there we go, and even if you're going to change the shop front, you'll still need to do some sort of shop front, and so it's good to practice using the curtain wall tool. So, um, so afterwards I'll show you how to change this to make it look like the existing one. And uh, then maybe very quickly I'll put the floors in, and I'll do the columns in the next video. So finally here, just back to ground floor. For this building, you can assume that the floors go below the, uh, sorry, the, the, the walls actually go below the floor. So I'm just going to use the floor tool with extending to walls to call turned off. Pick walls and I'm going to pick the inside face of all of the main walls. Again, we know it steps down in this area, but I'll just do it all with one flat floor to begin with. And in this area, we need to be able to see the walls that are below the curtain wall. So for that, you'll need to change your view properties. And uh, you can do that just by switching in properties to your floor plan properties. Go down to your view range and set the bottom to unlimited and the view depth to unlimited for this one. So there we go, so now I can see those walls and back to pick walls and choose them. There we are, so finishing off, just use trim. And so when you start doing this detailed modelling, which is always going to be the case when you have an existing space, uh, you have to model things the way they're, they're really built, um, that you really start thinking about construction and, and getting Revit to work the way it needs to in the real world. So yeah, I can just join those together and that should be a finished loop. Yes to join geometry and the level 1 floor should be much easier inside those walls
there we go. So when you ask this question, really important that you say no, you don't want the floors to attach to your walls. Or your walls to attach to the floors, but yes, you do want the geometry to be joined. Okay, so looking at the 3D view now, there we are. So you can see floors, they're shaded so you can see the floors inside. Still got to do an entry ramp. And do you know the um, conditions for uh, entry ramps into buildings like this? Pretty much, yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's all in AS1428, but that's right, yeah, 114. You can do 1 in 8 still, I think, in some situations if they're really short, but uh, yeah, check that. But uh, yeah, generally 114. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it all depends on the length. 